31st of May 2024. Just a quick video. I'm waiting for a friend and a brother in Christ to come and then we're off within a few minutes. So I'll end this quite quickly. I just want us to focus at the moment on the fact that once Jesus has set you free, spirit and soul and body, your house is swept clean. Jesus sweeps you clean, beginning with your spirit, then your mind and emotions and will, actions, then, of course, your body. Now, you, I still have sinful flesh, sinful nature. But we take authority over us as a person. So my human spirit in Christ, <clears throat> excuse me, in Christ, in the Holy Spirit, in Father's will, my human spirit takes authority over my mind, my emotions, my will, my actions, which is my soul. And therefore, I take authority over my flesh, my physical body, the body of flesh, physical body. Jesus had a physical body. But of course, I'm going to resist that side of me, sinful nature. Romans 8, verse 1 forward, New King James Version Bible, puts it in a nutshell. There's no condemnation for me, personally, now. Why? Because I'm living according to the Holy Spirit, not according to my sinful nature. I'm not living according to your sinful nature. Man's sinful nature, whether they go to church or not, whether they're churchgoers, whether they're charitable workers, Christian ethos, whatever complexion of so-called Christianity they have, including leaders of now apostate denominations, etc., etc., I'm not living according to their sinful nature either. And of course, you know, I know what the Bible has said, what God has told us through the Bible, written in black and white, sin is always crouching at the door of your swept clean house. So don't let sin in. If you let sin, you'll end up being seven times worse than you were. And remember, Jesus delivered a woman from seven demons. Did she complete the race? Did she get to heaven? Well, we assume she did. We assume she did. We hope she did. We assume she did. What about demoniac? Delivered of a legion of demons. And he wanted to follow Christ physically, but if you remember the story, it's not a parable, it's a real life story in the gospel. A demoniac full of demons stopped Jesus audibly. And Jesus rebuked those demons, told them to be quiet, come out of him. And they begged Jesus to send them into the pigs, physical pigs. And off they went. And of course, the pigs went mad. Right? Pigs are not human beings, they were animals, they went mad, and they all charged as a herd off the cliff into the, the lake, and they were drowned. And the people were terrified. Who is this man that commands the demons, ruining our livelihood, destroying the pigs? Well, <laughs> did they take Jesus to court and sue him for the cost of the pigs, the cost of their livelihood? As far as we know, they didn't. Were they tempted to? Of course they were. They're human beings. Now, I remember uh, Paul, the missionary, he cast a demon out of that servant girl who had the gift of fortune telling, a demonic use of uh, a counterfeit gift of, quotes, prophecy, but it was fortune telling. And of course, fortune telling is about making money, about speculating about the future, as told by the fortune teller, the medium, who consults demons to have a sense of what the future holds. And of course, this is, there are two kingdoms, parallel kingdoms. One is the narrow white arrow going heavenwards. The other is a black arrow, a broad black arrow, either side of the narrow white arrow going heavenwards. And of course, that is going the opposite way, hellwards. We're in Christ, in the white arrow, so to speak, the narrow way of Christ, pure white arrow, going heavenwards, forwards and onwards and upwards. But of course, 
the enemy is controlling the broad road leading to his destruction and he's dragging as many people as he can to hell with him every day. The devil's going hellwards and all the people, the sons of the devil, Pharisees, etc., modern day, dead and alive today, they're going in the wrong direction. Not listening to Jesus, not listening to the uh, prophecy from Jesus, not listening to God the Father's will. So that's an overview. We're going forward in Christ, onwards in Christ, upwards in Christ, heavenwards in Christ, and the world is going the opposite direction, outside Christ. Even if they think, as churchgoers, they're saved. Even if they think they follow Christianity as a Christian ethos, and that saves them, it doesn't. Religion doesn't save them, nothing saves them. Good works that they do, even in the name of Jesus Christ, doesn't save them. 2 Chronicles 7, 13 and 14, it's still there on the table for people to look at, come to terms with. God's saying then and saying now for the last 30 odd years in my hearing, in a unity group, I remember it well, unity group in the YMCA, late 80s, maybe early 90s, 2 Chronicles 7, 13 and 14. And it was often quoted ever since that time in my hearing. God talking to his people. If my people called by my name. Well, who are the people called by God's name? Well, Christian, Christians. What about the Messianics? Yeah, modern mess Messianic version of, quote, Christianity. They've gone a stage further than Christianity, if you like, and they've invented something called Messianic. Messianic anity. Messianic anity, which is not a word in the dictionary. I'm, I'm making it up because it's not written down. But it is a thing where certain Christians, let's call them white Western Christians, want to become Jews. They want to follow the law, they want to follow the Torah, they want to follow the festivals, they want to follow the eating festivals, the eating uh, um, instructions for eating festivals, special days, special ceremonies, and white Western people want to become, quote, black, or swarthy, or brown, like the Middle Eastern uh, Messianic Jews. So it's another denomination that man has invented, which is a form of Christianity, but quotes better, because it's Jewish and Christianity mixed, and they might say it's a prophetic thing. But of course, it's God who builds his church, living stones. It's God who's the gardener, who breaks off every branch of the wild olive trees and grafts us in as branches into the cultivated olive tree that God himself is the root of. Man is not the root of the cultivated olive tree. Man can start a church called the olive tree or the olive branch, and he registers it as a, as a Christian charity with a number, etc., 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 and man becomes the owner the leader, the CEO, MD, chairman, board of directors, and it could just be one man heading up his one-man band organization. The olive tree, the olive branch, and he does it as a prophetic thing unto the Lord, not realizing that the body of Christ is the one cultivated olive tree not owned by man, not run by man, as in any sense of a business organization, a commercial organization, monetized form of Christianity, or messianic, messianic, it's an odd word, an awkward word to say, messianicism, a spirit governing another religious body, another religious denomination, formed and run on the pattern of this world, albeit religious calling themselves Christians or Messianics. Of course, there's some good people in those denominations. They are born of Christ, but they're at the moment they're caught up with the religious spirit of Christianity and or Messianity. Churchians. 
go to church. But we are the church. The body of Christ is the church. And I've defined it by a set form of words just to explain who we are. Christ's true, holy living, obedient ambassadors, disciples of Christ. Christ who's the king, the Lord, the master, the teacher, the one God, Emmanuel, God with us, God incarnate, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Yahweh, Yahweh, in the form of a human being called Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Now, we can't explain it with our fine mind, our finite minds that God is one, but he has aspects of himself, as we do. We are spiritual beings with a soul, with a body. And Jesus was fully human, with a soul, with a mind, emotions and actions, of course, normal human being in that sense, but perfect, sinless, blameless, spotless, a virgin man, a virgin baby, a virgin boy, a virgin teenager, a virgin man. He never sinned. <clears throat> One of the sins that corrupts every human being down the ages is sex. They start to think about sex. It's a natural thing to do. Start to think about sex. And the world, of course, is obsessed with sex. Sex sells. And I speak as an ex-salesman, uh, an ex-advertising, marketing man, ex-PR guy. Our agency was a full servant agency, covered every aspect. Every aspect. Every aspect. So my friend has appeared. So I'm going to wind up now. I'm just going to beckon him over shortly. So, Father, we want to pray and thank you, Lord God, that we are the children of God. Not born by human decision, by your will, Father, like Queen Esther, you made us in your image to send us into this world for such a time as this, 31st of May, 2024, as you sent Queen Esther into this world, as you sent John the Baptist into this world, and as you sent Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, into this world, that we are here for your plan and purpose, in your plan and purpose, in your will, in Christ, in the Holy Spirit. And we ask you, Lord God, to lead us by the Holy Spirit, like yesterday, to a certain car park. Trevor and I were sent to there to meet someone who needed you, Jesus, and who received everything we said and we gave them direction to go to a certain church building in the city center which is open seven days a week to ask for help from the women there just a broken woman needing help from the mature women of god there women of christ i mean to go in and, ask, and say the words i need you to tell me more about jesus and if she says that to them, they'll know where to start from with her. Tell her about Jesus. Tell her the gospel. And she will be healed of her brokenness. Isaiah 61. I gave her scriptures, including that particular one. So we'll leave it there. Pray for us now. We're going out on a mission. We don't know specifically where. We're going to a certain cafe where there is a meeting of the body of Christ. Just a small group of people. <clears throat> meeting outside religion, of course, but very much born of God and Christ-centered. Pray for us as we pray for you to find today one or two true, holy living, obedient disciple ambassadors of Christ in Christ. You can fellowship with the Holy Spirit and with them. In Jesus' name. Amen.